Hey guys, welcome back to the shop today. It is six something o'clock in the morning right now on a Sunday. Uh, and I'm gonna see if I can start squaring up that gantry. So the plan here is I am going to try to square up the gantry to the table as best I can. Uh, if it's going to be used as a plasma cutter, if I use torch height control, it really won't matter in the end. But uh, if I ever decide to actually use this thing as a router, which was my first plan, but we'll, we'll recap on that later. Um, uh, I want it to be as flat to the table as possible. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try using this uh, dial indicator and uh, run it along the edge of the table around the frame and uh, I'm going to mount it to this guy so that way I have kind of a fixed spot. Now this is aluminum and this has a magnetic base and uh, magnets don't sticky sticky to aluminum so I'm going to try to just clamp a chunk of scrap steel I have around. I used the last two of my C-clamps and found out that this one was all cattywampus. Look at that. I'm not sure what I did there. But anywho, I'm going to try clamping down that piece of steel, mount my uh, dial indicator. We'll run around the table and we'll see how close we are. And uh, if we're kind of close, I'm going to mark where the gantry is and then drill some holes, I guess. That's a Sunday school version anyways. So I'm going to get to it here. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so I tried a little something different. Uh, what I did is I just threw my, uh, I threw my uh, level up there. Uh, it's probably the straightest thing I have in my shop. And uh, it uh, kind of looks a little bit better. We'll start at zero here. We'll just run her down. It's about 10 thou up to the right. 15-ish. Yeah, 15-ish. It's 15 thou. And I mean, I've only used that level as a hammer twice. So it's probably way more accurate than this table is. So uh, I'm going to raise it. And I've checked the back. I've checked the back rail as well, and it's the same thing. Uh, it's about 10 to 15 thou up towards the right side. So I'm going to see if I can uh, raise the right side a little bit, a couple degrees or a half a degree or whatever 10 thou is across a five foot span. And uh, see if we can square it up. And then maybe we might be able to start drilling some holes. And uh, I don't know if you can see through my window, but the sun is starting to come up. And I've just got nothing done. So let's get to it. within five thousandths of an inch uh, that's probably as close as I'm ever gonna get this thing you got to remember guys we're using uh, we're using angle iron angle iron and some V bearings and this is all just from the mill material that I picked up at either at work or at a local shop so I mean I don't know beggars can't be choosers I guess uh, so I can't really seem to get it better than that and plus I got to worry about this with the gantry too. So I got to probably do this all over again, but uh, we'll keep working at it here. We're getting somewhere. It's straighter than what it was. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep at it and we're gonna see if we can do some more to straighten this out. I might see if I can get somebody else in here to help me hold this thing and adjust it or find a better way to adjust it. Cause uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, these corners, corners of the bracket you can't really see it because it's covered by the c-clamp but this is a triangular plate and these corners are flush with the back of this side plate so as long as i keep you know keep that kind of closely see i moved it in just to schnerz so i'm gonna have to keep that in mind that's why a second pair of hands might help so because i can then try somebody can try keeping it straight this way while i adjust this way or vice versa so uh i might see if i can get somebody to give me a hand and uh, we'll keep messing with it and hopefully we'll get her straight soon because once she's straight, then I can drill my first hole. And I might even, ah, 
I should have done that. Take this whole bar off, drill a pilot hole, uh, drill a pilot hole into one of these tabs that I'm hoping to thread a bolt through. Uh, just a just a little little hole, and then square this all up. And then once it's square, I can pilot drill it or center center hole punch it or something like that, so I know where the holes are going to go. Probably should have done that. Might still do that. One step forward, three steps back, kind of thing. Oh well, we'll keep at it. Stick with me here, boys. Okay, guys. So I drilled the holes. I took that gantry off, drilled some holes, uh, just little ones, just little itty bitty ones. Uh, you can see them right here, kind of, sort of, maybe. Just little holes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mount this back up there, try to re-square it up, and then I'm going to use a center punch to mark, I'll probably do one hole at a time, to be honest with you. Mark the holes onto our end plates. And once that's done, then uh, we'll uh, start mounting this thing, I hope. So I'm going to set the camera up, and I'm going to just start setting this thing up and try to square it off and drill some holes. Stick with me here. Okay guys, so I got that, uh, got the gantry bar back up uh, and I leveled it out as best I could. Uh, and according to this uh, $12 digital uh, protractor, uh, I am bang on. Um, and so is my measuring tape showing the same thing. So I think I am straight, I am straight this way with this bar and I have it right where I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center punch that hole right there, same on the other side. And I'm gonna throw uh, a pin in there or something to just fix it there so I know that that's there. And then I'm gonna work on uh, this of this bar. So as this thing tilts, I can get that thing zeroed as well. So uh, I'm gonna set up the camera again and I'm gonna keep going and hopefully we can get this thing bolted down because I wanna see this thing. Okay, so I got that pinned up there. I just uh, drilled a hole the same diameter as uh, as a shingle nail, and I fired that through there because I didn't have anything other anything else that would really work that well. A little Buddha, but it'll work. So I just have it hanging there. I found out while doing this when I was clamping it down to the side plates that I'll probably need to shim shim some of this. Like I got a good uh, oh I don't know, it actually looks bigger on camera, but about an eighth of an inch, give or take, uh, just on the one corner here. You can kind of see it as I roll it up that uh, I got to space this thing. So I might try doing that first. That way I'm not pulling my gantry plates in too far. Because if I bind if I bind those plates up, then uh, she won't roll very smooth. So I might uh, take a look at that. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to clamp it up just where I had it before. That way I can check to make sure my holes are kind of straight. I should have taken the plates off and thrown it in the drill press. Uh, because now I'm banking on that my hand drilling was semi-straight. But, you know, who wanted to take that all apart and throw it in the drill press? And that's just too much work. So uh, I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna see if I can shim up the sides and get this thing straightened up. And uh, once she's straight, I'll re-drill the holes bigger and throw some bigger bolts in to hold it. And that's where she'll stay. So guys, a little trick of the trade. Uh, don't go out and buy yourself shim stock. I mean, obviously there's a time and a place building some machines in your own shop or just messing around, you don't need it. Um, I always grab your favorite adult beverage or whatever's in the recycle bin. And uh, all you need is a razor blade and you got shims. Now, sometimes these are almost too thin. Let's see if I can uh, measure this here. Where's my caliper? Let's set this up, zero it out. So I just have one shim here. 40 thou shim right there and uh, I've done this multiple times and they're terribly consistent I'll try another one here as long as there's no kinks in them 35 
and this is like a nine dollar caliper so i mean that's that's pretty pretty good if you ask me so that's what i always use for shimming uh at least if it's small stuff if you're dealing with bigger gaps like what i'm dealing with here i just grab a piece of scrap and placed it in there for now because now i know how thick i need to be and i'm just going to put one or two of those forty thousand shims in that side and then this guy should be uh fairly solid and, and sturdy and then we'll work on getting it zeroed out so uh little uh, tool tip for you guys you guys i realized in that last clip i said forty thousands that's not what i meant i meant four thousands um but anyway we got our gantry bar mounted up uh, we just have our uh, shingle nails as pins right now. You can kind of see what I'm doing there. But I drilled the holes. I fired some of these nails in just uh, as pins. They're pretty snug, so it'll be a nice fit. I got this thing as level as I can. I checked it after almost every hole. Every hole I drilled, I rechecked it. So this thing's working out pretty good. I took out my shims already. Um, I might shim it up one more time just to make sure I'm, you know, because I don't want to push. I don't want enough shims that I'm pushing this, this plate all out like that. Uh, like I don't want to put a bend in here, so I'm just going to shim it just enough that I know when I tighten the bolts down It's going to be as straight as possible So that's what I'm going after so I'm going to take a reshim this up and then I'm going to take a drill uh, from the back side of the plates right uh, right back here and uh, Drill uh, drill another hole uh, I'm not sure how big of a hole. I made enough room there so I can put a 3 8 bolt in there. I might just do a 5 16 but uh, yeah, I might drill a quarter inch hole first and just kind of work my way up and leaving as many pins in as I can as I do that. So I'm going to get to drilling and we'll see if we can get this thing bolted down. That'll be a good start. Um, I have motors coming. I have motors on the way. And uh, me being as cheap as I am, they are shipping from China. And uh, yeah, I think uh, if I get them within this month, I'll be very pumped. So uh, actually, I'll probably only get them in February because it's close to the end of the January right now. But uh, I'll let you guys see those when we get them. And then we can start finishing up some things like the Z-axis. The Z-axis could get done because I need to make a top plate for my motor and stuff. But uh, let's get this gantry bolted on so that way when the motors do come, we have something to do. That's where I'm going to leave this off today. We got that sucker bolted down and she is rigid. You can see my ugly little shims there. I'll clean that up. I might even make some nice big triangle ones that fit behind there nicely. But uh, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but this guy doesn't rack much at all. The racking is when one side moves and the other one doesn't because you've got such a long span. So sometimes you see it racking a little bit. And uh, that'll bind up and stuff, but you can actually uh, program that out in the software. Um, so it should work pretty good. I got my Z axis up here, just held up with some, uh, some zip ties because you know, zip ties for life. But uh, we're, we're looking pretty good. Uh, like I said before, I have motors coming. I'm pumped, I have motors coming. Uh, so that'll be a big, big step so we can get some stuff finished here. Uh, but this is where I'm gonna end this off today. Um, simple video and I'm probably just kind of boring, but whatever. It's all stuff that needs to be done. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching guys. If you're a subscriber, thank you. And if you haven't, please do leave me a comment. I'd love to chat with you guys. And, uh, hopefully next time we can start making me thinking about how we're going to mount our motors. So we'll see you on the next one.